uh, it's a pleasure to introduce Rodrigo Salomão from Universidade Federal Fluminense. He's going to talk about vibration by singular curves on an irrational surface. Well, thank you, Andrea. I'd like to thank all the organizers for the opportunity to present this talk here. And it's, I would like to say as well it's, uh, that it's a joint work with Joan Welder and Halo Santos from UF as well. And it's part of Halon's PhD thesis, okay? So, uh, to start, I would like to recall an important theorem in algebraic geometry, which is Bertini's theorem on variable of singular points, uh, which says that almost all fibers of a dominant morphism between smooth algebraic varieties over an algebraically closed field of characteristic zero are smooth. Well, in 1944, Zaris discovered that this theorem is no longer true. If we pass to a field of positive characteristic, and I would like to give you a simple example here so let us consider K be an algebraically closed field of positive characteristic P and F a morphism from the affine plane to the affine line given by this way, okay? So the fiber over each T in, in the affine line is an algebraic curve given by this equation and we can apply the Jacobian criterion to compute the singular locus of this fiber. And we can show that this fiber is, by simple computations, we can show that this fiber is singular exactly in this point, okay? And uh, now I would like to tell you some interesting connections of these uh, vibrations. The first one is that such vibrations are connected with, uh, with the Enrique's classification of surfaces to positive characteristics, and it, it was done by Bombier and Manford in 76. The second one is that it provides to construct uh, Interesting examples in positive characteristics. For instance, uh, it's possible to find a linear system in P2 by non-classical curves, where a non-classical curve means a curve with all of its points being flex points, okay? And another interesting connection is with uh, Kodaira Vanishing Theorem, and it was discovered by Mukai and Zhang. And the fourth con interesting connection is that vibration by singular curve is connected with isolated singularities with infinity Müller numbers. Okay, and it was done in a joint work with Abramo and Juan. So after to present these uh, interesting connections, it's natural to ask if it's possible to classify this phenomenon, okay? So the first one who studied this problem was Stoh, and in 2004, and his idea was to use a well-known connection to classify this phenomenon. This well-known connection, uh, to, to understand this well-known connection, we, I need to define uh, which is a vibration by singular curves. First of all, let me define a vibration by curves, which means uh, a dominant and proper morphism from uh, between algebraic integral varieties over an algebraically closed field such that almost all fibers 
are integral curves and such that the total space is smooth up to a base restriction to a dense open subset of the base Y. Okay? Well, we are interested actually in fibration by singular curve or equivalent such that almost all fibers are singular curves and equivalently we are interested in the existence of a horizontal divisor containing the singularity of almost all fibers, okay? On the other hand, uh, there is a, the, the, the horizontal prime divisors corresponds to closed points of the generic fiber and it's natural to ask about the, the properties on the points, the, the closed points of the generic fibers that characterize uh, the fact that the horizontal prime divisors contains the singularity of almost all fiber, okay? To answer this, uh, the answer for this question, sorry, is that uh, the horizontal prime divisor contain a singularity of almost all fibers if and only if this point is a regular point here but a non-smooth point and I, I'm going to define what I mean by this too. So we say that X is a regular if uh, its local ring it's, is regular as a point of the generic fiber, of course. Okay, here eta is, a, is the generic uh, point of y. And we say that x is non-smooth when Uh, there is a point on the curve obtained by the extension of the generic fiber to the, uh, to the algebraic closure of its base field lying over this X such that this point is non-regular. Okay, so the connection used by Storr was the following. Uh, F is a fibration by singular curve if and only if its generic fiber is a regular but non-smooth uh, curve over the field of rational functions over Y, of Y. So, but now I would like to tell you about another approach which works on surface and was locally obtained by Bombier and Mumford to obtain the, the Enriquez classification of surfaces and globally it was obtained by Takeda to construct counterexamples of Kodara vanishing theorem and by Shimada to describe the phenomenon of supercuspidal families of curves, okay? And to do this, I would like to show you a simple example, and I will leave this here. Well, I'm going to consider the vibration in the previous example. So here is the vibration by singular curves, defined by this expression, okay? And we have the divisor containing the singularities. If you remember, the, the singular points of each fiber are like this. So 
they belong to the line y equals to zero, okay? So, they are here in the red line and if you take the fiber of this morphism over some t, it is obtained by the equation y squared plus x to the p minus t. Oh, sorry, let me take a small letter because I'm going to need capital letters. And if we, we introduce new variables here, like a p root of small y, uh, a p root of the small t, and capital S equals to the small f, s, x, sorry. Then this equation will be reformulated in this way. So instead of small y, I'm going to put this. So I have a p power here. I have a p power here and instead of t, a small t, I'm going to put this and I have a p power as well and I put the p power, the whole equation, so we are going to obtain capital Y squared plus capital X minus capital T up to P, okay? So it's natural to think that this process to introduce some varia new variables uh, provides a kind of the singularization of the map, okay? And this is exactly that we are going to put here. So we introduced the capital T and this is the morphism obtained by this new variable and here above is the morphism uh, which we can define by introducing these new variables like here, like I put there on the blackboard, okay? And it's possible to make some simple computations to show that this vibration here, F1, is exactly the vibration to that we have to put here to commute this diagram. And here, this equation define the, the, the fibers of that vibration F1, okay? Okay. <laughs> so now, a natural question here is, uh, if, is it, uh, if it's possible to understand the geometric properties that characterize the pre-image of this horizontal divisor containing the singularities of the general fiber, okay? I'm going to, oops, no, here. So here it is. So the pre-image under this, by this map, is exactly the horizontal line given by capital Y is equal to zero, okay? And to answer this question, I'm going to introduce, oops, sorry, a vector field. I don't know if it's good to see this vector field in, in green, <laughs> sorry. But it's the partial uh, derivation with to respect, derivative with respect to y, okay? And I'm going to introduce some other vertical lines. For each t on the base here, I'm going to consider the vertical lines x equals to t, okay? And by easy computations, we can show that these vertical lines are tangent to these fibers over at each point of this divisor here, this horizontal divisor red here. 
So we have this uh, picture, okay? And more than that, it's interesting that if we compute the vector field on the equation of this line, we, we are going to obtain zero, okay? They are killed because if you make the partial deriva derivation with respect to y of this equation, we are going to kill the equation, okay? So this uh, line, this divisor, is actually the divisor that we, which we say, which we call by the divisor of tangents of this vector field with the vibration F1, okay? And we write it in this way, uh, the tangents divisor, okay? That's the reason of this notation here. And I have two more interesting comments here. The first one is that this uh, affine plane here is the scheme associated to its uh, polynomial ring, but this polynomial ring is exactly the polynomial ring of capital X uh, with variables capital X and capital Y up to the P, so they coincide with schemes, okay? And this polynomial al algebra here is precisely the kernel of this vector field here in this polynomial ring, okay? So in this way, we call it this scheme here is coincides with this scheme here as topological space, but with a new structure shift which is given by the functions here, which are killed by the vector field, okay? So in this way, we call this scheme by the quotient of x, y by the vector field, and we write in this way, okay? And this construction is general, So if we have a variety over an algebraically closed field of positive characteristics, and if we take a vector field on x1, which means that it's a derivation over k uh, of a derivation in the field of rational functions of x1, it's possible to show that uh, <coughs> the composition of d1 with itself p times is also a derivation Okay, and we say that this derivation is p closed when the second derivation is a multiple of the first derivation, where this guy is a rational function on x1. Okay, here in the example, we have actually a p-closed derivation because the composition of this derivation with itself p times will be zero, okay? And more than that, more than that, if we have a morphism from x1 to some other variety y1, and we take like this the Frobenius map of D1 
this curve. Let me call in this way. I'm going to write by the image of the Frobenius morphism. And here we take the morphism obtained. Ah, sorry. I, I have to, to define this quotient variety here. Sorry. I'm going to, to put it here. So sorry. So the quotient variety by the vector field D1 is defined as, D, as x1 as topological space. Is it, it is equal to x1 as topological space? But with a new structure sheath, obtaining in this way, defined by this way. So for it, open set of x1 up to d, we define the function. It, it, this guy is defined by the functions of here that are killed by the vector fields. OK? This variety, which is nothing more than the x1 as topological space with this new structure sheath, is called the quotient by, of x1 by d1. Okay, so now we can go to the quotient, and this map is obtained by the inclusion of uh, obtained by the inclusion of sheaves. Okay, this is contained in O x one of o, u. Sorry, so we have a map a map of schemes given by this inclusion. Okay. So this map is like this. And we can induce a vibration here. OK. So we have that this example can be obtained in a general way like this. OK. Well, let me continue there now. Let me. And in the case where here is a surface, a smooth surface, and here is a, a projective surface, here is a projective curve, we can understand we have here a general fiber. Of F1. And the image of this fiber here, that I will write by just F, then this is a, we can show that this is a general fiber of this map F. And here is a surface as well, and here is a curve as well. And we can compare the arithmetic genus of the fiber here and this fiber here, okay? This is the, the given by this identity. So the, the general fiber of F, small f, minus the, sorry, the arithmetic genus of the, 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 the general fiber of small f, minus the arithmetic genus of F1, which is the general fiber here, Sorry, here is F1, OK, is given by this number, where here is the intersection number of F of the fiber with the divisor associated to the vector fields. 
okay? And it follows from two results. One of them is do it to Rosenlich and the other ones do it to Storr that this number on the right side can be obtained in this way. Or right here, uh, the sum runs over points of the generic fiber here of the morphism small f. And here we can, k is equal to the field of rational functions of y1. And this is the extension of the ring, the local ring of the points of the generic fiber to this field here. And here is the, the <coughs> sorry, the integral closure of this ring here. And it follows to notice that here, uh, the story results here says that this dimension is bigger than zero only when the point is a non-smooth point. So we have uh, equivalence here that this number is bigger than zero if and only if the vibration on the left side here is a vibration by singular curves, okay? So, it's possible to construct a kind of the singularization of such singular maps, maps, <laughs> vibration by singular curve. And to do this, I'm going to take a vibration by singular curve, small f, where x is a smooth surface, y is a smooth curve over k, and, and if x1 is the normalization of this fiber product, then it's possible to show that there is a vector field without isolated singularities uh, such that this diagram commutes. And more than that, this diagram is exactly this one that I defined it here to you. And more than that, after applying this process finitely many times, we can obtain a vibration uh, by actually a uh, vibration which is generically smooth, okay? So this, the last vibration here on the right side is a kind of the singularization of a vibration by singular curves. So a natural question here is if it's possible to use this Shimada construction to classify uh, vibration by singular curves and we don't have positive answers yet, but we decided to get some feeling coming from the other direction. What do I mean by this? So we decided to take a birational classification of a class of vibration here, and we decided to take this birational classification to construct Shimada's diagram. Okay, to obtain this variety, the vector fields, the, the, the tangents divisor, the invariant curves, and all this stuff, okay? So we are going to do this in a particular class of surface, which are called by unirational surface, and to introduce this, let me remember, recall uh, Lurov theorem which says that every curve dominated by P1 is also rational. Here, dominated can be a dominant rational map, okay? And this map is, this, sorry, this theorem can be generalized for complex surfaces, but for surface over positive characteristics, it, it's no longer true, it's not true anymore, okay? And it was discovered by Zariski in 58, 58. It was discovered, okay, by Zariski in 58, and by introducing the so-called Zariski surfaces that are non-rational surfaces over uh, a field of characteristic P that are dominated by P2. And the dominant rational map are purely inseparable of degree P. So a surface 
dominated by the projective plane is called unirational, and it's possible to see, to, to, to prove that if we take a unirational surface with a morphism to a curve, then this curve must be the projective line. So in this way, we are going to study unirational surfaces, X on the left side, with vibration by singular curves, such that the Shimada diagrams, uh, the, the, the surface X1 in the Shimada diagrams is rational, okay? And a little remark, since this base is the projective line, we have locally a setup like in this example, okay? Well, for simplicity, we will study the case where this vibration here is generically smooth. Oh, in other words, we need just one step to obtain a desingularization of the vibration F. Okay, we can do the, uh, the description of Shimada's diagram for vibration by arithmetic, uh, for uh, vibration by singular curves of arithmetic genus one, but I'm going to skip it to go faster, okay? And I will only consider uh, vibration by singular curves of arithmetic genus two. Well, by an upper bound due to Tate, we can obtain a characteristic smaller or equal to five, then, and we will only consider characteristic three and five. Well, we observe that the arithmetic genus of the vibration, of, uh, vibration by singular curve on the left side decrease when we extend the base. So there are two possibilities for the arithmetic genus of the generic fiber of F1. The first one, it must has arithmetic genus one, and then this vibration F is called absolute elliptic vibration by singular curve, and it's possible to have, uh, the, it's possible for the generic fiber of uh, F1 to be a, a curve with arithmetic genus zero. And in this case, we say that F is an absolutely rational vibration, okay? And let me talk about the classification, the birational classification on the left side of, of absolutely elliptic vibration by singular curves. It's a result due to Borges Neto and it says that each absolutely elliptic vibration by singular curves of arithmetic genus two on a unirational surface defined over a field of characteristic three is birational equivalent to a vibration where F from X to Y, where X is a hypersurface, yes, a surface containing the, the three dimensional fine space with these coordinates. Here, H, is a function, a rational function in T. J is a rational, it's actually a, a, a tree root of a rational function in T. And Y is the affine line. And F is the restriction to X of the projection on the last coordinate. And here it's possible to see the divisor of singularities. It is the prime divisor given by this curve and now we can give you uh, the whole description of Shimada process, which is uh, given in this commutative diagram. X1 in Shimada process is the surface given by this equation on this three, uh, inside this three uh, dimensional affine space with coordinates capital Z, capital W, capital T, and uh, here, the vector fields on X1 is given by these three sentences here, okay? 
And the divisor of tangents is the prime divisor given by this line inside x1. And the invariant curve tangent to the fiber over t0 at this point of the tangents divisor is the curve obtained by the intersection of these two surfaces here. OK, let me connect this with elliptic surface. If we make the change of coordinates indicated here uh, in this field, we obtain a, a surface by rational equivalence to x1 given by this equation, OK, in this three-dimensional affine space. And if you consider g from s to a1 induced by the projection in the third coordinate, uh, it's equivalent, it is equivalent, equivalent to F1 and has generic fiber on the elliptic curve with Vastra's equation given by this with J variant exactly J. Okay? So if we take the resolution of this surface S, we will obtain a rational elliptic surface which is defined by a smooth project and rational surface with a surjective morphism whose general fiber is a smooth curve with arithmetic genus one and admitting a section. And in this surface, this irrational elliptic surface, it's possible to see that there is a vector field whose vibration obtained on, uh, on the quotient of the elliptic surface by the vector field is a vibration by singular curves of arithmetic genus two. So a natural question here is, given a projective, rational, and smooth surface over an algebraically closed field of characteristic P with vibration uh, by smooth curve here, uh, how can we find a p-closed vector field such that the induced vibration on the left side is a vibration by singular curve with prescribed arithmetic genus? Well, here we can uh, answer this question for elliptic surface and vibration by uh, absolutely elliptic vibration by singular curve of arithmetic genus two. So if you consider a rational elliptic surface over an algebraically closed field of characteristic three with generic fiber capital A uh, with Weierstrass equation like this, so there exists a three closed vector field D over E such that the vibration on the left side is an absolutely elliptic vibration by singular curves of arithmetic genus two, if and only if this coefficient is different from zero and the J invariant is a rational function on P1 that is not a cube of a rational function, okay? Well, let me tell you about the idea for the solution of the general case, but we don't have it. If we take a rational function with a vibration by smooth curve, then there is a birational map for P2 and we induce a linear system on P2, okay? And after to, to, to kill the indeterminants of these maps by a sequence of blow-ups, we can obtain S as a sequence of blow-ups of P2 on the base points of the linear system given by F and G, okay? And if we take uh, here a vibration with arithmetic genus uh, arbitrary, this uh, linear system can be complicated, but if we, we are on elliptic surface, it can be simpler. And if you take, uh, it, it can be given by a theorem that in characteristic zero is due to Miranda, 
but in positive characteristic, uh, it's obtained by Kosek and Dolgachev, which says that a rational elliptic surface is obtained up to isomorphism from a sequence of blow-ups of P2 on the base points of the linear system of smooth cubic F and G. Okay? So, uh, <laughs> we would study the existence. We, we need to, to study the existence of a P closed vector field on the projective plane having tangents with the pencil to produce after the quotient vibration by singular curves. But uh, as a consequence of Sechadri results, we have that P closed vector fields admit first integrals. And therefore, they come from a differential one form like this, where P and K are homogeneous polynomials of the same degree. And since the fibers of the linear system obtained by P and K are invariant curves of these differential one forms, we should investigate the tangents between these two linear systems. Okay? And, well, by doing some simple computations, it seems that it's uh, this process is better to generate vibration by singular curves with many singularities on, uh, in the general fiber, okay? But it's not the case that we are working with elliptic surface on that example, that previous example. And to understand, to, to get uh, some insight, we decided to, to realize these elliptic surfaces, okay, in order to take a, 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 a linear system and to produce these Weister's equations after to realize, and there where we have the Weister's equations, we, we can understand the vector fields and we can bring back to P2 with this process. And to do this, we need to classify the, the, the elliptic rational surfaces that generate an absolutely elliptic vibration by singular curve of arithmetic genus one. And we did this. And we have 223 possible cases. But uh, I just, I'm just writing here the case where all fibers are irreducible fibers, OK? And the work now is to realize this surface with this uh, Weister's form, generate the vector fields there, and bring to P2 in order to understand better the tangents between linear systems. Okay, that's all, sorry.